and welcome back to Cowag Conversations. I'm Doom Cootie, your host, and with me today, I have the fantastic Triana. Welcome to the Coag family. Oh my gosh, nice to be here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> it's finally, uh, God, I, I'm so glad to finally be here because we've been trying to set this up for legitimately months. Like when you first were floating the idea of doing this podcast, you were like, hey, we should get Triana in sometime. And I'm like, hey, someday the stars are going to align and it's going to happen. But it's not this week and it's not next week and it's not the one after. And I'm glad <laughs> and look, that it finally happened. Get back to you. <laughs> I'm just going <laughs> to. No, you know what, when uh, uh, that happened, that same scenario happened, like meeting IRL, because we were always like aligned with similar events. Obviously, I'm a little bit less in the esports space, but like with PAX, I, I've, I've followed and known about you for probably about two years now, and we'd, <laughs> we've only met twice. <laughs> <laughs> and, and one was at PAX this year and the other was, I want to say DreamHack. No, it was the fan Xbox Fan Fest. Oh yes, yes and I, I didn't actually. I wasn't sure if you were actually going, so I and like I randomly bumped into you at the bar at Fortress, and I was like, oh, I did not expect to see you here. <laughs> Hold on, you go. <laughs> when you say you bumped into me at the bar, okay, I am a sober gal, right? I was not at the bar; I was near the bar. There was like <laughs> the, the the makeup, like the nail polish bar, was the bar that I was at, right? <laughs> Oh, yes, you are. You are correct. I, I hadn't. <laughs> you know what? I don't think I even had a drink that night. You um, need to. The energy in I, the I room was enough. Tea. I had a boba tea. Was that what that yeah. was? Yeah, there was a boba tea. I, sh I should tell you at this point that that also, I believe, probably had like energy drink in it. I think that was the was like oh. boba tea with a little bit. Yeah, I, th I think that was part of it. But they were good, okay. though. You I, need I, that I, at like 3 a.m. to get through like oh. an hour and a half of presentation. <laughs> and those 45 chairs. minutes of Starfield was like incredible. <laughs> but like <laughs> at 4.30 in the morning, my eyes were bleary. <laughs> I don't think, yeah, I hadn't, I hadn't slept um, that entire night. So, and I was actually flying out at 10, I think 10 the next. <gasps> so you would have gone straight from Fortress to the airport. Uh, I, I slept Almost. for two oh. hours. Yeah, hotel. Pick up yeah, your belongings I, and then go to the airport. Yeah, yeah. So that was wild. Um, anyway, we're not here to talk about me. We're here to talk about Triana. Now, I I have been researching your history um, in this space, and it's all oh God, good. Here we go. It's all good. okay. A few, a few. <laughs> it's all it's all good, but. I have to say, probably the most interesting thing that I found, and it's it's more common than I think people think, is the just experience and transformation that you have had over the years that you've worked in this industry. And I I just wanted to ask, like, how how have you found your journey so far? How did you get started? To, Confess to us what, what's go, what's go the real the story thing. of Triana. Okay, I mean, look, my my confession, uh, I guess, is and and this, given the wrap up that you've just given me, feels feels kind of bad. But I, I almost feel guilty being on this podcast because I feel like I'm not part of it enough. I don't know if that makes sense. I feel like I'm not I'm not enough of a maybe it's imposter syndrome, maybe it's kind of the perfectionist side of me that I'm absolutely trying to battle. But like. You know, there are people who do really cool things. I just do this as a hobby for fun, right? So in my my day-to-day mm -hmm. -day life, I'm a broadcaster. I work at a radio station. I work in a marketing communications role as well. I'm on air. I host shows live. I pre-produce shows. I, I work with broadcasters and especially new and emerging and developing talent to help them hone their craft and, and kind of mm -hmm. grow as presenters. So I guess that's where part of that comes from. But that's also kind of how I approached streaming because I, mm. I came into streaming from a, a very broadcast, like, okay, we need to have content. We need to have a running sheet. We need to know, like, what's going to happen in the on the broadcast. And then I started doing it. It's like, oh, we're just kind of playing games and hanging out. It felt very... <laughs> <laughs> kind of opposite to what I was doing. So I kind of approached streaming from the angle of having a space to try to be, try to practice being the version of myself that I wanted to be. 
I guess if that makes sense. So I started out. Um, I get that. I, I want to say 2018 was when I started. It was when we first got internet connected at my house. I first got my first home PC. I'd been playing games on like Xbox and, and Switch mm-hmm. before then, but I finally had like a PC so I could do the streaming thing. Yeah. Um, and went to, shout out to Barjo, by the way. Can we shout out Barjo? I was at Barjo's yeah, okay. packed party. Um, yeah. And was able to ask him questions about how he does what he does and kind of, because he has like a wildly creative stream like he's yeah kind of bouncing off the walls doing lots of different things and i was able to ask him questions about you know how he prepares for that and how much effort goes in behind the scenes so mm-hmm. that i could kind of ready myself for what i wanted to do um mm-hmm. and it was really really good to have that perspective and then he was like you just need to just start doing it i'm like okay cool bet <laughs> like, yep. i started the next week uh <laughs> and I, so I started playing a game called uh on rush which RIP okay. on Rush, I don't think it exists anymore. It's a, a 6v6 uh, tactical racing game. Okay. Um, if, you, if you imagine like Overwatch was done with racing cars, trying to like slam into each other and knock each other off the track, it was kind of a little bit like that. Um, okay. And I was in like the top kind of one or 2% of people playing that game, but there were very few people playing that game. So it wasn't <laughs> a competitive category. Um, and so that was on Twitch. That was really, really early on. And then this game came out... Um, you might have heard of it, Forza Horizon 4. Yeah. Um, I, I, I might have. Might have heard a little I might bit. Have, I, might, I might have a couple of months in that game. <laughs> <laughs> Hours, months. Um, anyway, so, yeah, so I was playing that, and that was obviously tied in with Mixer. So I started streaming on Mixer, um, and that was where I really started kind of growing. I found a community that worked for me. Um, and, again, it was, it was kind of fun being a little off-Broadway because people – like Twitch was quite a dangerous place for a, a trans person to be at the yeah. time. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's much better now, but at the time it wasn't great. And Mixer were very much very uh, on it in terms of moderation and not yeah. standing for transphobia. I guess smaller um, group of people who are on the the platform, so it's easier for their cat team to be able to get to it and take people out. So. So that was really useful over there. Um, and then when that collapsed, I kind of came back to Twitch and kind of dove in. But again, it's not something that I do full time. Like I look at people who are, you know, creating these incredible podcasts and putting hours and hours into the production of it and creating these brands or like, you know, people who are streaming every day. You look at people like Loserfruit who are just yeah. on in this upper echelon. Even people like, you know, Profound Rice, who is... Yeah creating this really beautiful community there and also doing the the hosting thing and the casting thing in certain games. Mm-hmm. And and I'm doing this on the side as as a bit of fun. I don't have subs or bits enabled on my channel deliberately because I would feel like as soon as I started having that, I'd feel like compelled, like I have to keep streaming to kind of make the people mm. who are subbing happy. Um, so I literally just do it for fun and because I enjoy it. And through that, you know, that's led to a whole bunch of really incredible opportunities. So I don't know if that answers your question specifically of the growth, but I guess the growth I've shown is, I mean, look, when I started out, I was streaming under a different name. (laughs) I was streaming under what almost felt like a character at the time. Mm -hmm. Um, And then as I kind of fought for my new name and, and got triana and and legally was triana i was like right let's blanket it and let's do it everywhere and then everything kind of settled down and i felt much more myself like i wasn't having to having to pretend to be somebody else um so yeah Yeah. i think that's mostly the growth is is becoming more confident in that wildly unpredictable broadcast environment (laughs) you know i think there's such it's such a beautiful journey though I know, I know people always say, and I've always felt like a little bit bad about it, but uh, people have said that consistency equals growth. But I, I personally, personally, like I want to feel free to create whatever I want and, Mm. and create things that speak to me. And if people want to come along for that journey, come along, you're more than welcome. Um, And I, as a creative in this space, I, I I don't think that you need to say, oh, I'm less important because I don't do this full time or because, you know, people are doing it in a better way or I would, 
I would prefer this approach to how I'm actually able to do it because of the way I have to live my life because I need to eat um, (laughs) and put a roof over my head. Uh, But, yeah, I think I I have actually, I found found myself in, in the very early days actually comparing myself to other people and I was like, uh, you're not other people. Mm. And I found myself needing to say, Hey, you know what? Comparison is actually the thief of joy as much, as much as we can, we can, you know, be inspired by people. I think, you know, we see a very surface level, uh, vision of, of their life and, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes and I think that the more we can, you know, uh, accept our journey because it, it's, it is beautiful that I think the, the better off we'll be as creators in this space. If that makes sense. This, is the, this is the thing that I've continued to kind of struggle with and unpack and especially this year um, is that I am very much a perfectionist and I am trying really, really hard to undo those perfectionist <laughs> kind of ways of thinking because I, I am my own harshest critic. And if I can't do something perfectly, then I'm like, well, it was garbage and I hate it, you know? Um, but, but... You know yeah, I, 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 I get that. I've, I've had to let go of a few things. Like, I'm, like I'm, I mentioned in the green room beforehand that I'm not that great at video editing, but I'm finding myself having to edit things. So whenever I don't have to edit something, I'm like, yes, thank you. Amazing. Um, otherwise I feel like absolute garbage because I like, I'll sit there and I'll like analyze it and I'll like drive myself crazy. I work in a, a live broadcast environment and I find being live where you can just kind of flub your line and then kind of barge on through and hope it's fine. I find that a more fun place you, to be. I feel called out. I feel very cool. No, but I think that's more fun. And I think that's more authentic <laughs> Then when you create something that you know is going to be there for a really long time and you mess up and you go, oh, God, hang on, I'll take that again. And then mm. you take it again and you take it again and then it's your sixth take and you're, like, finally happy with the product that you've put together. I, I think doing it live in real time the first time is more authentic and also means less editing. So <laughs> so I, I connect with that on a deep spiritual <laughs> level. <laughs> Uh, yeah, like I, I never want to create more work for myself or other people. And I'm not in a position like people, you know, like Loser Fruit and, you know, like Pokimane and things like that. Like I can't, I can't afford an editor. Like I just, I don't get to just send all my, here's my stream or, he, you know, here's all my um, logins, download them and, you know, uh, turn them into something funny for me. Um, I, I I can't, I, I can't do that. So, so yeah, I'm just. Yeah, we're just out here. We're just out here trying to live our fun, authentic, best life. And Do you know I think, think the thing, the, the thing about you, and it's something that I also try to kind of lean into as much as possible. I don't know if you know uh, Nay Saga, N N E S A G A, from over in the UK. She's a, mm-hmm. a Stephanie Naoma. Um, oh, she has okay, a, yeah. Yeah, she has a thing. Um, impact over numbers. A and, and I like to think or I like to hold on to the idea that the impact that I have, regardless of which platform I'm on, regardless of whether I'm streaming or broadcasting or posting dumb shit on Twitter or posting on Blue Sky or whatever it is, is that there is impact in what I'm doing and that hopefully, even if it's not perfect and exactly the way I imagined it, you know, um, it's it's cutting through and meaning something I think you touched on that earlier when you called yourself a a creative rather than Mm. a creator well yeah like I suppose I think I think because it's not my full-time thing Mm. I think I think we're I think we're always creating in our lives but because because this doesn't because this doesn't pay the rent or (laughs) <laughs> you know, pr- provide for my life monetarily. It, it provides for my life spiritually, uh, emotionally. I, I I love what I do, uh, but it's it's it doesn't. I, I wish it did, but it, it doesn't. So I suppose that's why I can s- sort of. I'm a bit like you. I can I can separate 
this the, the things that I do in this space from my everyday, even though I think about it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um so so yeah and I think uh, speaking of being a creator in this space the, the reason why and it had nothing to do with the fact that you're a trans streamer it was the fact that you played Forza I was like <laughs> hell yeah I'm I'm so I'm so into that I'm so into that you you <laughs> like honestly like I was so excited because it was I don't know and you probably know more than I do I don't know many women who play Forza on stream and it was just so exciting for me (laughs) it's it's a very uh it's a narrow field yeah Um, someone said that racing games are niche and I was like what do you mean (laughs) <laughs> they're they're a little bit niche in that they they don't have the same um, I guess kind of market penetration as games mm. that are you know like first person shooter games yeah. or games like Fortnite which are massive. But then you look at you know when you say racing games, the names that come to mind for a lot of people is oh like Mario Kart, yeah, and that's got that's some huge. of the, the most market penetration of any game ever. So. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, obviously a huge franchise behind it, but it's still a mm. it's still a huge part of, of the landscape. And I challenge anyone to say, Oh, hey, do you want to play Mario Kart? Yeah, sure, let's play some Mario Kart. Uh, every, like, yeah, it's no yeah. one's gonna be like, mm, nah, that's mid. Like it doesn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't happen. For sure. But yeah, there's there's very few people or, or women in the space who play games, play racing games in particular. And I, I think that Similar to kind of the really macho shooter games, I think it, a lot of the time it can come down to the community around mm. the game and the way that, yeah. like, especially if you're playing a game where there are, are comms online and you got to chat with people, yeah, that brings issues <laughs> alongside it. Um, but no, I think I don't... when you're playing games like Forza, where the whole point is, like, regardless of what you do, you're going to get points and you're going to have fun, like, yeah. I think that makes it a more welcoming space. Oh, for sure. And I think that overall, like, I could talk for days and days and days about the accessibility inside Forza, like, honestly. Um, I, I, and I've never, I've never had a, a bad, I've never had a bad experience. Like, out, I mean, outside of a few multiplayer connectivity issues, but we won't talk about that. Um, <laughs> uh, outside of that, it's been fantastic. The only times I've had issues is when people have been like, I don't know, deliberately trying to like slam into people on the corners and that yeah. sort of thing. And I'm like, that's very rare. And that's not even a on a, a sexism level or because of yeah. anyone as a person. It's just because they're angry or they're bad yeah. at the game. It's like, go, <laughs> go play Rocket League. You yeah. know, I, I know a fantastic game for you. Or, you know, Demolition Derby or, you know, like. Wreckfest. Uh, Wreckfest. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, I, <laughs> I actually play, I played Wreckfest at, um I think, the Games Expo. Uh, mm-hmm. this year and I'd never played it before and I was like and it was on a steering wheel with pedals and I was like oh my god I could not <laughs> I could not it was not fun <laughs> I was like who who likes being rammed into like in a video game you know what I mean like no one I um so I was lucky enough to host the uh Xbox ANZ Game Pass Gauntlet earlier this year um, which was, was a amazing. thing where we had like five different random games that would come up and players who had entered the competition, like you didn't know what game it was going to be until we literally like turned the screens on and it's like, surprise, you're playing like <laughs> cooking simulator and you got to like <laughs> cook a burger or something. And they had no idea what the game was and what the instructions yeah. were. And the very final round was Wreckfest, a game that at the time I had not played and I had to be there doing commentary for this game I hadn't played. And everyone's like, oh, he's, he's the racing fan, Triana. This will be great. And I'm just like, oh, ah, yeah, big crash. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, well, that was like when I was I was brought into um, the, the Perth. Look, the Perth uh, Twitch streaming team are so fantastic, but, you know, we're, we're a little bit limited um, and I actually filled in for someone who was casting for Rainbow Six Siege. Oh, great. It, it was a great time. That? I had to press all the buttons for the cameras. And I was like, <sighs> oh, my God. Oh, and you had to, uh, like, other people were talking, but I was like, 
So you were you were vision switching, is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, and pre- yeah, I was like, oh, okay. I I, I thought I was going to be talking, um, mm-hmm. but I didn't end up speaking except for I interviewed some of the players like in between rounds. But yeah, so that was fun, and, and we and we uh, we raised money for the Star the Starlight Foundation. So that that was a Beautiful. really fa- yeah, it was a fantastic experience, but. Controlling the camera angles of Rainbow Six Siege was nuts. Oh, you were observing, like, camera angles in-game. I thought you meant, like, uh, in a studio somewhere, but in-game you were observing. Yeah, right. Well, no, it was it was in the studio. Oh, okay. Uh, and, so. I, and, I had, and I had control over the camera. So it was, like, either top-down or follow this player, follow that player. Okay, um, observing, yeah. observing. Yeah. Okay, I don't – I'm <laughs> – I don't have, I don't, this I don't is the thing. Like so, so <laughs> there is so many different bits of lingo in the scene, but if you say, oh, I've had like a little bit of experience observing in Rainbow Six Siege, people go, oh, okay, I can get you to do that again. And then, oh, okay. All right. I'll write that down. Observing. Observer. <laughs> Observer. Observer. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, but yeah, like it was, it was fantastic. So I, to- I totally understand that, you know, <laughs> sometimes you're put in positions where you, ca- you, you're like adjacent to it and you know, like some knowledge, but also, you're kind of on the fly. But you know what? I think that that creates like some really good skills. It creates, you know, it encourages resilience and problem solving and just overall like you you realise that you're actually more capable than, than you think you are. And at the end of the day, other people don't know what you don't know, you know? It's also something that you're doing very well right now and that I think anyone who, by, by which I mean hosting, right like the role of the host is not necessarily to be the most knowledgeable person in the room Mm. it's not Mm. it's not to you know make yourself look smarter than everybody else it's literally to kind of direct traffic and the flow of Mm -hmm. conversation and also set up your guests so that they look like the experts so you can come in with that very limited knowledge and then say so you know doom as someone who's been creating this podcast for a while you know what kind of challenges have you come up against and that gives you the opportunity as the expert in that area to be able to talk on the thing that you're knowledgeable about that's the role of a host that's what you're doing beautifully here in this podcast and i think oh, um thanks <laughs> yeah you're crushing it. <laughs> oh, um thank you yeah, so that's, much it's, it's what i excel in just because i enjoy setting up other people in the mm. conversation for yeah. them to look good because if they look good then i look good because i've thrown to them yeah and and the fact of the matter is like i i'm curating the guests on here and you know it's my job to bring on people from diverse backgrounds and at the end of the day i have to like you say s- set up the guest to answer questions that i think the audience would want to know and and I, I it's very fun it's very <laughs> fun i like it i like it a lot that's why i keep doing this but this isn't about me. This is Sorry. about you. And I've I- accidentally <laughs> flipped it back on you again. How does this- <laughs> Sorry. It's to- no, it's, you know what? It's totally fine. And I'm actually really flattered because not many people like ask me. So I it's 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 very nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what what do you find the the most fun about your job? What 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 keeps you uh, in that space? Which job? The my my day job or the your day the your day your day. We'll start with day job. Okay, so it's for me. I guess it's all creativity. Um, yeah, creativity is my my thing. For anyone, is that if you're trying to work out, you know, what it is that you really want to do as a career or as a, as a pursuit as a hobby that you're really interested in, work out what like the core of why you're interested in that because then it will open up the world to a whole bunch of different things and for me that core is creativity and so when I'm in a I I broadcast on a radio station it's working out creative ways to I don't know (laughs) introduce a song by Kylie Minogue for the 538th time you know and, and say something different that you haven't said before how can you think creatively to come up with something that you haven't said yet? How can you, you know, use a different piece of audio to kind of prove a point or to 
you know, make this song shine? How can I bring in a clip from a caller that someone has said that they've said something funny and I can like take that and flip it into something else that is cool. Yeah. Um, in my like five days a week, but probably six days a week job at the moment <laughs> in like a marketing communications angle, you know, it's, um, it's me being in charge of social media, coming up with creative ideas for, for content to put online um, but also keeping our clients happy and making mm -hmm. sure that the content that they're bringing is something that's going to connect with our audience and also sending out EDMs like a uh, electronic digital marketing. And yeah. if I've got to try and make this sound interesting in an email, how can I say it in a way that, you know, is a little bit different and will get people thinking a little bit differently um, when it comes to streaming and, and even in gaming, you know, I think when people play games, you can either play through a game in a very kind of linear, uh, I was going to say speed running way, but that's actually wrong. But you, you can try and play through it in the, with the path of least resistance, or you can try and think really creatively to solve the problems that you come up against in a game. So in a game yeah. like Portal, you know, there are some uh, levels where there are multiple ways to solve it because you're kind of approaching the puzzle from different angles. And that's the point. It's the creative thinking. Yeah. In a racing game, it's, okay, how am I going to get in front of this player? It could be on this next corner, but I could also sit back here and take this unique line through here and maybe I'll end up on the other side in a different position where I can then challenge on the next corner. Mm -hmm. So so the, the creativity and the playfulness, I, I think, is the core of, of why I love what I do. Um, I, I don't know if that answers the question. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely. I think I think people I think people need to find their why, and I think that's the reason uh, why some people sh might struggle in their careers because they haven't found their why just yet. And I think I think it's a it's a it's a really lovely thing that you've been able to hone some professional skills and even some soft skills, and then bring that into a space where you're having fun. And, and that's, that's the, that's the best thing. Like I know for a fact that for myself, my education degree has definitely assisted me as a host, being on podcasts, talking to people, my communication skills. And I think, you know, there, there are a lot of people who, you know, do have, and obviously we're coming back to this, but that every day, the, the thing that they're professionally trained in, they really can bring it to something that they really enjoy and really love. Um, and I, I think that's amazing. Well done to you. Uh, you're, you're doing so well. Every, everything that I see from you, whether it is, the, uh, you know, whether it is hosting, whether it is streaming, whatever it is, you, you come out with such thoughtful, meaningful content and it, it really does show. And you, you might say to yourself, oh, well, you know, I'm not posting enough or I'm not streaming enough or whatever, but you know, it's, it's, it's quality over quantity. And I, I feel like you never, you never miss. So thank you. That, that means a lot. Um, just because I don't know, I, I have felt like maybe I have been missing lately. Um, I've, I've felt a little bit, um, just with like, so when I moved into this new role at work, probably kind of two-ish months ago, before mm -hmm. then I was filling in on that role while they found a new person. Surprise, they found me. Yay. Um, and oh, and, and so that. that was me doing this new role and also doing my old role at the same time mm -hmm. and also filling in for someone else who was on leave. Okay. So That's a lot of like. It's a lot of pressure and also it was a lot of, I guess, mental space trying to come up with ideas that would work in all of those different roles. Yeah. Um, and, and because of that, I haven't been able to focus as much time and attention on gaming and streaming as I would like. Um, so this is, this is my own kind of, it's not even a hiatus because I'm still streaming, but it's mm. just a little bit of a... I don't know, a creativity break. I saw a really interesting video the other day and I can't remember the creator. It was a, a well-known um, singer-songwriter and I screenshotted it and I'm hoping as I open my phone now to scroll through it that 
the screenshot is still there and I can refer to it. And maybe like she's mentioned the tag. It was a video from like the 1970s or 80s. It was okay, like an old video. And she was talking about creativity and she was like, oh, I just make sure I um, rotate my crops. I just make sure that, you know, if I'm working on something in music and I'm running out of ideas there, then I'll head over and start painting something. And then I'll come back and I'll, after I've run out of ideas in painting, I might pick up the guitar again and start playing that. And so I I think that's part of what has worked for me is having so many different creative outlets that if I ever get stuck in one, I can just focus on something else and then come back to it later on. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, and there's, there's actually like, that's really admirable because some people like stick to something and even when they stop enjoying it, thinking that if they stop it, they can't come back, but that's, that's really not true. And at the end of the day, like, because, because these things are hobbies, because they are things that just bring us joy. If, if, if you're not experiencing joy and you're just doing it to, you know, be consistent or to stay relevant or whatever, whatever it is that's driving you at that point, uh, it kind of seems a waste of energy to me mm. and you know protecting your energy is so it's so important it... absolutely <laughs> it is preach <laughs> protect your energy yeah for sure and you know and you and you've done that you you took a step back from the thing that it was it was fun but if it's you know my my brain is full you know, streaming is actually more taxing than I think people think. Uh, you know, b- being live uh, for, you know, three, four hours, however long you're streaming for, and that's at minimum, um, it, it can be very, very draining. And, you know, you're going to work and, you know, you, you're consuming all of your, you know, creative batteries, I suppose. So you you definitely need that downtime, that rest time. And I, look, I, I respect. I respect that so much, and I, the, I, I do not hesitate to to say, you know what, I, I, I need to take this time and to to communicate that and to you know model that kind of self care is so important in this space, and you do that so well. Thank you. Can I just touch on a point that you made there that was really interesting? You were talking about streaming for you know, three or four hours at a time and needing that downtime. Can I just say streaming is performing? Yeah, it is. You are performing if you're on stream. And I don't know who needs to hear this, but I feel like I'm preaching here to someone, right? (laughs) Like if you, if you go to, to, like I have had the chance to go and see like Hamilton, right? Like that is a three, three and a half hour production. You, you go to any of these, performances when the show ends the performers are wiped yes they've been moving around more than we might on stream but they're wiped they've been focusing mentally they've got that kind of creative space mentally of remembering their lines and remembering their movements remembering the blocking doing all of that and you're kind of doing the same thing except you're also engaged in a game that you're trying to win right (laughs) (laughs) and also you're mentally engaged in chat and trying to keep up with what everyone's saying in there that is a lot. And then you come off stream and you wonder why you're exhausted. Like, yeah, you've been nonstop thinking and you've been focusing for three or four hours and you actually need rest. And it's why I have never and will never do one of those streamathons or subathons. Okay. It's not yeah, healthy. Fair. It's it's, it's not yeah. healthy and it's not it it's not sustainable. And I think it can potentially be quite dangerous, especially for people who end up doing quite long ones, um, you know, it's you n- actually need the time away to rest and decompress, and that actually makes you better in the long run. Yeah. That's why I will never I will never judge anyone that sleeps on stream. You do you, boo. Like if you oh, if people, 100%. If, if people want to give you money while you're sleeping, like <laughs> I know how important that is. <laughs> do it. Do it take that money, sleep on stream. But seriously, like, I, I think if you're going to do a, a subathon or, or whatever it is, yeah. you know, you actually need to kind of schedule time after the event away to yeah. rest and mentally reset and recover. Otherwise, like, if you just jump back into it, you're, you're going to be in a really bad place. Yeah. I mean, you know, they could they could be having some help. I don't know. And, you know, everyone's... everyone's um you know, energy levels, everyone's mind, we're all, we're all different, you know, and what works for one person might not work for you. So if it's 100%. working for them, 
great but if it does become a problem if you are experiencing you know symptoms that you wouldn't normally have you know like listen listen to your body can i on the on the listen to your body point this is one of my favorite things do you ever play like nintendo games as a kid like specifically nintendo branded games on like a nintendo 64 or a super nintendo and it would flash up on the screen like warning you should take a break every hour while you play the game because it's really mentally <laughs> fatiguing and then you go to like the physical printed instruction manual and it says you know if you're looking at a screen the whole day it's really bad make sure to take a 10 to 15 minute break every hour <laughs> they're not lying it's it's the truth <laughs> you actually need to break I've, um, yeah. I've started and i've gotten really bad at it and i want to get better at doing it again is um very deliberately scheduling brbs in the middle of my stream because usually i'm streaming for like three or four hours um very deliberately scheduling like a, a five or eight minute break mm-hmm. which is not every one hour but it's every two hours to deliberately look away from the screen and yeah. go refill your water bottle go get a snack go do something yeah stop looking at the stream it's gonna be here there's a countdown timer we'll be back in like eight minutes we'll be back yep. in seven minutes whatever you, it is. you can put you can put little games on the screen through obs yeah. like the chat can do stuff you can run like you know little uh you, yeah you can put bots in there to entertain the chat if mm. they're you know particularly hyperactive <laughs> the, the thing is i i don't want the the chat to be entertained i'm literally like i'm making this screen as not as boring as possible like it's just like a slideshow of photos of of people i've taken a selfie with um, but literally go just and do like, your own things. Go like fill up your text. water bottle. Go touch go. grass. Drink <laughs> a cup of water. You're welcome. That's if you've a been watching great me for idea. This long... gonna... <laughs> you know what? For a... so when we were in um lockdown, so I'm in Melbourne, we had some of the longest lockdowns in the world. Just ask us about it. Um we... <laughs> I I went on a walk one day and took my camera with me, like my video camera, and got like 10 or 15 minutes of like close up macro footage of like dewy grass and the sun kind of setting. And God, I don't even know where that video is. I need to go and find that and bring it back. Cause for a while that was my BRB screen and I did not connect because I think the phrase wasn't popularized at the time, but touch grass with the (laughs) literal footage of grass. I'm going to bring that back. I'm going to bring that back. Grass, the grass outside. (laughs) Touch grass outside. Yeah. Don't touch your screens. Go, go outside just... and touch some grass. <laughs> it actually reminds like, me of of um something that Barjo does, where when he takes a BRB, he'll he has like extended pre produced videos that he'll put in there of him like walking outside, <laughs> 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 or like and then this like walking you. off a pier and then like <laughs> flopping around in the ocean and then walking back <laughs> on camera live in real time. And he's like, oh, I'm dry again. Okay, here we go. <laughs> but it's oh, it's a very wow. It, it's it's a it's worth doing it's worth scheduling breaks for yourself i mean even in radio you know we if you hear a radio dj schedule three or four songs in a row they're they're doing a poo yeah (laughs) 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 or the next break will be something really wildly creative (laughs) yeah all that yeah or they're preparing an interview or something like that they're or, absolutely or, using yeah. the bathroom, hundred <laughs> <laughs> percent. Hey, you know, I, I, I mean, as mo- most people know I'm a teacher. If a, if a, if a, you know, if a child is taking a little while, maybe it was, you know, maybe it was a big one. They weren't, they weren't, they weren't necessarily mucking around. I'm not going to make them feel bad for a, for a human experience, <laughs> an animal 100%. experience. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, speaking of experiences i'm sure i'm i'm more than sure that you have had a lot of good experiences but there have been some not so good experiences as a trans gamer that puts themselves out there what has been your experience that you have learned from that's really taken you back surprised you and how is that influence your creativity going forward okay it's a great question um and and actually it's good that you said creativity because it actually does come back to creative problem solving um and and i I will answer this question but i just really need it quickly because this is going to be groundwork for the answer okay creativity is lego blocks 
Yep. And your goal in life is to collect as many different Lego blocks. And those Lego blocks are ideas, thoughts, concepts, whatever. And your job, if you're being creative, is just sticking those Lego blocks together in a different way. So you, for this podcast, have come up with, okay, uh, women in gaming and uh, podcasts and interviews and stick them all together. And then you're sticking a fourth person onto it. Let's add Triana. And that's going to look different to sticking you know, this together, right? Yeah. So creativity and creative thinking is the core of it. Now, when it comes to negative experiences, my thought comes towards the problem solving of how I get around that and how I kind of deal with that. So in, in a, a social media context, I'm quite strict on uh, like access controls for things like comments and replies. Mm-hmm. Um on platforms like Instagram, I have it set so that you cannot comment on my content unless it varies, unless either you're following me or unless I am following you. And there are times where I need to lock it down and it goes to you can only comment on my stuff if I follow you because I yeah. know the people who I follow are not going to be turds, are not going to, you know, yeah. bully me. And if they do, it's like, well, why am I, why are we friends? <laughs> yeah. Why are we mutual? Exactly. So, so the the negative responses that I've had, for example, from things on Instagram were when I didn't have that in place. And I put that okay. in place and now it doesn't happen. On, you know, in chat, I've got a really good block list of words, <laughs> which, which come up. Amazing. In fact, I, I, I need to rebuild it because it was really, really cool, but I had certain phrases that if people said them in chat, the bot would cut, like snipe back at them with like a, a, a snappy comeback. But only so, like, something they thing? can see? Or no, 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 something whole- that everyone can see. So, okay. so here's, <laughs> here's an example, right? Um, so say you've had that experience where you're streaming and someone comes mm-hmm. in and maybe they don't like the game you're playing or maybe they don't like the way you're playing the game. Let's say it's The Sims, right? And they come in and they're like, "Oh, you should put a you should put a door in the side in the side of the house so that they can get out to the pool." Or you should play Fortnite instead of this, right? And it's people yep. telling you what you should do. Backseat I freaking driving. hate it. Backseat driving. I hate it, right? So I yep. had a, a an auto command that anytime anyone said, "Oh, you should do something," would track for the words "you should." And if anyone said "you should," the bot would snipe back with, "Yeah, but should she though?" <laughs> <laughs> and then I didn't have to address it because the bot is looking at it. Your um, bot and then they, sounds and then savage go, and I love it. <laughs> but then they go, oh. Savage bot. Yeah, yeah, and then if I do want to bring it up, <laughs> but if I do want to bring it up, I'll be like, yeah, no, I probably won't do that because I'm doing this instead. And that was kind of my way to get around that was, oh, I'm kind of chatting with about what the bot said there. So it's not even yeah. about your comment. It's about the way the bot addressed it. So I'm not even like making that person feel bad about it per se. Yeah. Um, In terms of like in person, I've had very, very few negative interactions with people in person. I've been very, very lucky in that vast majority of them have been really lovely and really encouraging. Um, Yeah. Had someone in fact, just recently who I really respect and I had no idea that they felt this way about me, but they said like, I just, I love seeing you on my timeline. Every time I see you on my timeline it makes me feel really happy and really good. And I'm like, yeah, but you're like one of the coolest people. <laughs> you're, you're not allowed to say that. I didn't think you knew I existed. An Uno <laughs> reverse, just... reverse card right back at you. <laughs> but, but yeah, it, it was Uno reverse. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, so, so in terms of in person, it is, if if there's someone around who I know I'm going to have a negative response with or, or have a, a negative interaction with, making sure I am around people who don't give me that kind of a reaction mm. so that the other person can't say something. Because if if I'm alone and someone says something, to like it, it kind of opens the door for someone yeah. to have that conversation. Yeah. Um, but if I'm hanging out with a friend, no one's going to come up and be like, I think this thing about you is shit. I'm like, really? <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna make this a two on one because you're outnumbered here. <laughs> you don't have the numbers <laughs> in, this, sure. in this conversation. Yeah. Um, and again, that is that comes back to 
the creative thinking and the Lego bricks of ideas, you know, Mm. any idea, anything you're interested in is a different thing that you can use and kind of clip into another idea that you have and clip into another idea you have to create this, this thing that will hopefully be helpful. Like that's creative thinking. That's what it's about. And I think we're all capable of it. And it's just how I then use that to counter the negative interactions that I have. That's wonderful that you you feel empowered to do that. Uh, that is brilliant. Thank you so much for sharing that. That's wonderful. Thank you for asking. No, that's totally fine. I, I, I do want to play a little bit of devil's advocate here, but like, how do you Oh, here we go, because this is one on one. <laughs> I'm not at number. <laughs> I <laughs> no, I just how do you remove the emotion from it? Like how how do you like I know you've come up with all of mm. these, all of these very, very logical, very systematic approaches to not having as many negative experiences, but when when they do happen or when they've happened in the past, like, did you have an emotional reaction and how do you, how, how have you like combated that? Okay. Um, so there's a few different, uh, ways to answer this. Um, I'll do the, you remind me, I'm going to answer your question in a sec from a, um, from, from the emotion side, but I'll answer it from the programmatic side first. Um, if I see, for example, a comment come through like on Twitter, right? And it's from someone I don't know. And it's because of something I said, like maybe I've been positive, God forbid, about like trans people existing. Mm-hmm. Who knows, right? <laughs> Let's say I've said something about that. And then some random decides to like jump in the replies and, and talk shit. I then go, okay, I don't know who this person is. Why are they replying to me? And then I go into my Twitter settings and I set it so that I only see comments or I only see replies from people who I follow or from people who follow me. There's like different settings that you can play and it literally filters them out of the replies. So I just don't see them. So that helps remove the emotion out of it because I'm not seeing it. I'm not focusing on it. Um, But when they do come through, I guess there's a few ways I look at it. This is the emotional side of it. The first is, I am very, very slowly learning. I'm trying my best to learn this. Everybody is doing their best. Even the crappy ones that call Even the crappy ones. Well, so like, let's say, let's say it's, you know, uh, we need, we need a fake name for, for someone on, on Twitter. Um, Um, Fboy69. Fboy69 jumps (laughs) in the Twitter replies. (laughs) Perfect. Thank you. Like, <laughs> and and says, and it's like, oh, I think you blah blah blah, whatever. And mouths off. It's like, well, okay, yeah. he's doing that because in his life, there's obviously something that has gone on up to this point to get him to the place where this responding is somehow making him feel good. That's his attempt at dealing with his emotions at dealing with his problems at trying to come up with a solution is going on Twitter and shit talking people. Mm -hmm. He's trying his best. He's not doing a very good job of it at the moment, (laughs) but he's trying his best. Um, when I, and as I say, I'm a perfectionist. Um, so I am trying to at the same time judge myself more kindly because I am my own worst critic. But also, yeah, like, it, when, I don't know, when I'm in a, a situation and it's not going my way on a on whatever level, um, if it's not, how can I phrase it? Like, I don't know, let's say something I'm doing falls short of the, the fantastic ideas that I had for it. Um, I'm actually freezing up here. Um, I have to assume that the person who has tried this thing just hasn't worked, but they're still trying their best. They're not actively trying yeah. to be terrible. You yeah. know what I mean? Okay. No, I, so I get that. That's the angle I'm trying to come at it from is, you know, everybody is trying their best to not be terrible to um, everyone's trying their best to 
get through the day. You know, there's a lot of shit going on in the world. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's how I try and remove the emotion from it is they're trying their best. I'm trying my best. Um, have you always had this approach though? No, absolutely not. <laughs> um, and, and that is evidenced by the number of people who I've replied to and then gone, Ooh, I shouldn't have sent that delete. <laughs> 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 but most oh. of the time when i'm sending those replies it's the people who don't follow me and i'm like why am i giving yeah you my energy? why yeah why am th- I... that comes back to the energy for sure you, you said you said protecting your energy and there's another concept not just protecting your energy but directing your energy yeah. and it's I, I yeah i can protect my energy by just like putting a, a barrier up but also directing my energy do i want to direct my energy towards fboy69 on twitter who is you know having a go at me for whatever random reason i don't know who he is doesn't even follow me versus i can direct my t- attention towards doom cutie who wants to record a podcast with me it's like well where am i going to direct my energy to somewhere yeah. where i'm going to get something out of it and the conversation is going to be great and it's going to be meaningful and it's going to have that kind of an impact or i'm going to waste my time on twitter arguing with some nobody like of course i'm going to direct my attention to something that's going to have more impact so can, that's can you, that's how I try and take the emotion out of it as much yeah. as possible. And you know what? This is what, if you're listening as a woman and you are not in your 30s, this is what happens. You turn, you turn, you turn, honestly, it's like a switch. It's, it's a bloody switch. And all of a sudden, the I don't give a F what other people think, if they don't care about me, switch turns on. And... <laughs> Next minute, you you look back on your life and like, why? Why did I do that? Why did I respond that way? It's brilliant. You know what? I, I think that switch flipped for me when I started transitioning and and changed my name to Triana because I had for so long been concerned about what people were going to think of me, right? And and yeah. how people were going to perceive that change. Yeah. Um, and then some personal circumstances changed and I was like, right, let's, let's go all in here. Like, let's, yep. let's go for it. Um, and literally nobody came back talking shit and everything that I had feared in my head was just me catastrophizing and, and building up yeah. this scenario that was never going to happen. <laughs> it's so easy to do though. We, 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 we get into, we get into our heads a lot uh, about, mm. It would be about anything like, you know, obviously a major change in your, uh, you know, the the gender that you present as like that's major. But people will be like, I, I think about it every day. I'm like, damn, you know, I really wish I was blonde. You know, blonde, blonde hair just looks so much better. You know, it looks better in hairstyles. And what if I changed it? But then like, oh, what people think? And then I'd have to like go and like maintain it and all this stuff. And you get right in your head about how, how that process would happen and how bad it would be and all that kind of stuff. Or if you're making like a new move in your career or you want to, you know, create something like, honestly, the amount of, the amount of doubt I had creating this podcast. um, Really? Huge absolutely i i had this i I knew i wanted to create it i knew what i wanted it to be because i knew that there was nothing like it out there and i thought i at the end of last year i was like this is what i want to do but i didn't know if i could actually do it and so it was marinating it was marinating in the brain for like four months of the beginning of this year and i was like looking at things and I I was actually trying to see if it actually was a thing anywhere else and it it just wasn't and I was like okay what am I gonna do (laughs) what am I what am I gonna do like am I relevant enough do I know enough about games and you know because I'd I'd actually the previous year I'd been horrendously online bullied and I was like can can I actually do this and I was like you know what you have done X, Y, Z, blah, blah, blah. You've got two years podcasting experience, you know. And I, I learned from that online bullying experience. I was like, you know what? I just need to take up lots of space. I need to be in rooms where people appreciate me and think I'm I'm good at what I do because I am. And yes. Yes. <laughs> and and you know what? I it, it it worked. 
And I was like, okay, this is what it's going to be called. And I'm going to get two other people on. I was like, okay. I was like creating the Google form because I was like, I wanted people who actually wanted to be on it, right? Mm -hmm. I was like people who would show up and have a deep interest in women in gaming. And I was getting a lot of flack from the spaces I was in. I was in Xbox parties and they were like, what do you mean? It's going to be all girls, you know, like, what do you mean? And I'm like, well, you can't come on. Because really, because the spaces I was in, like people just like invited all their friends on or, you know, like, and then they, like it was all about who you knew and all that kind of stuff, right? Like ma- big American uh, gaming podcasters, right? Mm-hmm. And I just wasn't interested in it. I was interested in the stories. I was interested in, and I know that women are as well because, you know, we, 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 we just are seeking that connection, right? Anyway, so I'm filling out the Google form and I'm like, I don't, I don't know. Am I, am I good enough? Like, is this, is this even going to be relevant? And, oh, so much doubt, so much doubt. And I put it out there. Next minute, Alana Pierce retweets it. It's got 100,000 impressions and I'm like, oh, shit. I'm going to have to actually do this now. Um, and then you, you, got a lot of, you got a lot of holding your feet to the fire on that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's, she was like, oh, you want to do this, do you? Okay, let's do it. <laughs> and I was like, and then she was in my DM. She was like, I can't commit to the podcast fully, but oh, I'll come on. I'm like, okay. <laughs> You got no choice now. I had no, I had. Before, it has to I had, now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So it, it was. It was like I, 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 I put, I put that out there, and it was like the universe kept saying yes, and I, I had, I had no choice. And I'm sure there, there, there are multiple situations in your life where, you know, whether it's buying that house or moving to that. Oh, we're pausing. Good thing we're recording. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure there are multiple times in people's lives where they have just, whether it's moving state, whether it's buying that house, they, they question those, those big, those big meaningful moves. And I was like, you know what, if this is how, how important it feels to me, then it's worth doing. And it's worth putting that energy into because it was like a magnet. I couldn't, I couldn't help, but want to do this, but I tell, I tell you what, there have been, and this is a, a real confession, there have been so many almost uncomfortable conversations with men about my podcast. And it's it's very strange. It's almost like I've I've been I've been considered like <laughs> someone said to me, they're like, you know, you're really good at what you do and you know, with your podcast and everything like that, but it's not it's not a fit for us. I'm just like, I don't walk around spouting, you know, women in gaming like all the time. I'm not, I'm not an, you know, an uber feminist or, you know, like someone who's really aggressive in that manner. I try, I try and portray a, a feminine energy all the time and being aggressive and in people's faces is, is not, and that's not something I want to portray. So it was, yeah, it's been a little bit confusing. And I mentioned this on, I mentioned this on other podcasts that I've been on, like, yeah, just a lot of derogatory uh, comments about creating this safe space for women. And I, I couldn't care less that some really important, influential, knowledgeable women in gaming don't want to come on your macho neckbeard podcast. Uh, that that seems like a you problem, Brad, you know? Skill issue. A skill <laughs> skill issue for sure so so yeah I I, honestly and it's it's really and we're not we're not famous like we we do stuff in this in the space and we're we're creative and people consume our content but we're we're not you know a, a celebrity but sometimes if you get too much in your head about it and you worry too much about what other people think because of all these zeros and ones that we're staring at and you know hearing at the moment like you're you're giving so much meaning to that and if it's if it's affecting your mental health like maybe Mm. maybe stop that (laughs) but I I was I was I was in that trap just and I'm sure you were too um 
and it's all about there growth. Are- it is all about growth. There are a few thoughts. Um, the first one, and I mentioned this on the uh, the the women in esports panel that happened at PAX this year. Yeah, and uh, and actually on the women in gaming panel. Now you were there at the women in gaming panel. I was, um, and I tried to quote someone, and I totally flubbed the quote. And now that you're here, I can tell you it was a Brene Brown quote. So can yeah. I can I literally yep. just read this quote verbatim yeah. off of the internet? Right. So this is part of the the negative reaction from people right um if you are not in the arena getting your ass kicked on occasion i am not interested in or open to your feedback there are a million cheap seats in the world today filled with people who will never be brave with their own lives but will spend every ounce of energy they have hurling advice and judgment at those of us trying to dare greatly. Their only contributions are criticism, cynicism, and fear-mongering. If you're criticizing from a place where you're not also putting yourself on the line, I'm not interested in your feedback. End quote. Right? And so in terms of taking the emotion out of it that we are talking about before, that is exactly it. But also it's people in the arena getting their ass kicked it's people like Alana who said, yeah, this would be amazing. Get around it. Like, I feel like for, for so many of us, the thing that we need is to just have someone to back us and say, yeah, Yeah. you're you're frigging great. Like do it. And so I try to be that to as many people as possible, (laughs) I guess, because I've had people who, you know, have backed me and I know the change that that's made in what I create and in what I do. And it just, it just takes one person. It really yeah. does. Like I've, you know, I've, you know, you look at the numbers, you know, numbers rule the world, really. Um, and sometimes I look at the numbers and I'm like, oh, they're a bit mid, you know, or I, I feel like, you know, the growth percentage isn't as much as I wanted it to be. And, you know. Yeah, but like, you just change the metric. You just change the metric. It's like, okay, so it's not the growth percentage but of, for, of, you know, viewers of whatever it is, but also then you try and measure that against what did I get out of creating this emotionally? Yeah. What kind yeah. of conversation did I have here that has fundamentally changed how I approach my creative practice, how I create, how I approach my life? <laughs> like the value <laughs> add there is worth more than the number. It's priceless. It, yeah, it is. But you know what turned, and I, I was in like, I was like, I wasn't spiraling, but I was like, I was like, mm. and, <laughs> and it took one message. Uh, lovely, lovely Miss Muffin Bear. I'll, 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 I'll shout her out. Um, she's got two little kids and, you know, she's a, she's just starting her uh, Instagram, you know, gaming, sharing, all that kind of Beautiful. stuff. So lovely. Um, and I, I want to read. I want to read exactly, exactly what it was, so I can, so I can do it, so I can do it justice. Um, because it just, it, it warmed it, it warmed my heart. It really did. Um, where are we? And we, yeah, we started, we started talking from, from then on in and she basically, she shared on her Instagram story. Uh, yeah, she shared like a screen, like a screen grab of the, uh, of the podcast. And I, you know, I responded, I said, thank you so much. And she said, no worries. I'm absolutely loving this podcast. Thank you so much for creating this. I've been really discouraged about sharing my gaming because I'm a female and I'm a mum, but this podcast has been really inspiring and motivating, especially with Ellie seeing her doing her thing, being a breastfeeding mum has been really inspiring because I just didn't think I could do content because I'm breastfeeding and now I know I can. Anyway, I'm rambling. Absolutely love what you girls are doing. Please don't ever stop. And, and you like printed that out and had it framed. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, if you haven't, you should. 
You should print that out. Lam- <laughs> no, don't laminate it. Maybe laminate it. Maybe put it in a frame or something. I like put it somewhere on a wall where you're going to walk past it every day because that is the heart of what you're doing. And when you but look I, at I, yeah, you know, the it's fears fun. that and, and I've by the way just gone and followed at it's muffin bear on Instagram. So thank you for the recommendation. Yeah. Um, but when you look at the statistics in Australia, you know, forty eight percent of yeah. the people who are playing games are women. Yeah. And I, so you know what? Having and that, I don't care. That, that I don't between, care if yeah. it's on your phone, on your Nintendo. It's, you know, multiplayer online games are not the be all and end all. People mm-hmm. who sit in Xbox parties and uh, people on PlayStation don't do that, but, you know, <laughs> they're not as social. But but if people on sitting in Xbox parties, you know, for hours and hours on end, that is not the norm. That is the exception. Mm-hmm. And for every single gaming woman out there who thinks that they're not a gamer or they're not relevant or they're not included in this industry because you know they have that you know one game that they love to play like just stop it stop it's not true it counts it's allowed (laughs) it does yeah you don't have to play call of duty to be a real gamer (laughs) you heard it here first triana said so so hashtag breaking holy shit (laughs) (laughs) but also i I think there's different angles to the content that comes up from people like it's muffin bear that mm-hmm. haven't been explored by the people who've made it to this point in their career so far like it's that it's the kind of other side of that expression if you want to oh, i'm going to butcher this what is it um if you only do what you've always done you'll only get what you've always got you've always got yeah right so mm-hmm. i didn't butcher it let's go confidence yeah but like no, that's right but but you know if every other creator in the world has approached it from a certain angle and you know it's muffin bear is like yeah but i'm i'm not like that like that's actually your superpower that's actually what makes you super different and you know someone who you know focuses on stories i look at people like laws who produces griefed right Mm -hmm. and the attention to detail and the love and the passion that is poured into that project and the storytelling, the storytelling mm-hmm. that is happening there is is not happening elsewhere. The love and uh, attention to detail and passion that's being poured into what the team at Snowball Esports are doing is not being done in too many other places, you know. And it's having the story and wanting to share that story and doing it in a way that's different to everybody else. Like that's that's the superpower. That's yeah the superpower that's the magic trick is that you're bringing something different mm-hmm. and so yeah i'm real well, damn I've, proud it's muffin bear i'm gonna go look at all your content now <laughs> now that i'm following you <laughs> she's gonna be all up in there commenting she's like mm-hmm. yes queen you do you love your work love to see it yeah vibes <laughs> all the emojis <laughs> love it and you know what it's it's and you probably make that you may probably make that woman's day um yeah, and and because I've I've been there, I've I've been the pe- people people don't really know this, but you know I I was quite lonely in the in the days when I when I had my first child, you know it's very it can be very isolating, and you know the the mum Instagram community is or probably even more toxic than any esports you know <laughs> any esports tournament like honestly you heard it here first. <laughs> The look, m- m- motherhood is, uh, you know, it's it's rough out there in the hood, you know, and I, I, I feel, I feel like so, so many women out there in those early days, like they, they want to engage in a hobby that they've always loved, but they feel like they don't have permission to do that because they feel bad that they're like, you know, spending time away from from their, from their children. But then I. I hear that, you know, and I'm in this magical stage at the moment where my four-year-old and my seven-year-old, we can all play games together. <sighs> we can play Mario Kart together. And that is bloody magical. That is, that is honestly, so good. My, my childhood trauma disappears. When, when, I, when I play games with my girls, I just, and, you, and it, it's just because you are in the depths, you're in the trenches. And I want every single gaming mum to to know that it's it's okay. It will end, and eventually you'll be able to play. You know, 
with your children and it'll be magical and you'll cry for the first time and then eventually you'll rage and you'll get into fights and you but you'll still love them afterwards so so yeah i just that's it's those moments for me and that's probably a little bit more of an emotional response to to everything but like that is fuel as much as the negativity and the you know the misogynistic comments uh is is fuel um it's it's not as it's not as big as something like that like that's that's truly meaningful and i'm i'm so glad that you've had people in your in your court because yes i'm an ally but i don't know anything about being a trans woman in this community and i'm honestly i'm so grateful that you're here <laughs> <laughs> Do most you, of these episodes end with people crying on camera? What the hell? You know, you know. Mo most, most, re most recently, I've had a, I've had a couple of criers. So I'm, I'm, I'm pleased. I'm pleased. <laughs> I'm doing my job. <laughs> I'm, I'm touching hearts. You know. Tears of a gamer girl is the next Tears. season. <laughs> we're, we're actually selling those on our pra Patreon. Uh, <laughs> oh my god, gamer girl tears. <laughs> Do you want right angry next, tears? Do you want sad right tears? Right next to the oh, bath sorry. water. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I, I support all all women in gaming, even if that is, even if you do have that niche. It's not my niche, but you know. And if you're if you're making the most and you're making it work, well, well done to you. And that's what <laughs> I say. Because uh, I, I certainly couldn't couldn't keep up with that. Um, there's no way I'm exercising in underwear and then selling it. I, I would no. never. Mad I, I would never exercise. What do you mean? <laughs> no mad respect, you know, and and it's it's the same thing of like you know people. Can I just in, in defense of these these wonderful people, you know, people talk mm. down on them. Oh no, it's fine because they've found their niche and they yeah. create content that makes them feel good about themselves, and they, they make absolutely bank. love it. They make bank. They feel empowered. <laughs> they yeah. they buy a house at a super young age because they've made all With this cash, money. You know, briefcase. With, just, That's what yeah. I imagine. <laughs> Like, <laughs> and then they surround themselves with other people who are doing cool things, who believe in them and they find their people. And if that mm -hmm. content doesn't vibe with you, then there's someone else out there doing different content that will. So just yeah. leave them alone. Don't be a For little sure. scared about it. Yeah, exactly. And I, I will never, I will never like look down on anyone. I'll think, geez, that's a lot of simps, but like. No, outside, mad respect. Outside, mad respect at all times. Outside of that, it, yeah. And. I've I've had I've had a few conversations with them because I'm I'm actually a little bit I'm just fascinated like I'm fascinated with the process like what you know what kind of what does the everyday look like for someone who's who's that kind of content creator like it it really I don't know it's just interesting to me um, so yeah absolute mad respect and just mad respect for anyone who just keeps going I mm. think um, I think Domino Jack posted a tweet recently it's possible. What? Well, yes, <laughs> highly possible. She, she's on there quite often. <laughs> I'm such uh, a fan of Dominic Jack. She's so cool. She's, she's so fantastic. Lovely. I was lucky enough to be on a panel with her uh, at PAX. <gasps> how was uh, that? How to work in gaming when you're not a gamer? Oh, uh, yes. Sorry, when you're yes, not a yes, streamer. Yes. Yeah. I didn't get to see that, but I wanted to. It was good. It was in the really cozy theatre. It was very dark and intimate. I liked it. Yeah. Uh, you know, low, low sensory, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was great and uh yeah she had a tweet out this was probably before packs and she said why you know i'm really struggling at the moment you know continuing to create content what what keeps you going and you know had all these responses you know it's my community my family whatever blah 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 and i said if i stop there's one less woman in gaming and I know that's like a really heavy, like it feels heavy, but mm -hmm. for me, it, for other people it might seem heavy, but for me, it's just good. Like I, and I, I'm sure you might come up against these feelings as well because, you know, you're part of a, you're part of a gender minority. You're part of a community that is, that needs to be seen. So do you find yourself feeling that kind of way? 
towards the continuation um, of this? To a, to a point, there's there's a few different uh, angles there. Let me try and work through them. Um, the first one is, you know, if I you know if I wouldn't do it, like, what's your motivation for keeping on going, right? Um, mm. And and you said um, that there'll be one fewer person in gaming. For me, I actually take the kind of opposite angle of that, and it's through. Um, actually, one of my one of my colleagues uh, at work, Jackie Kinder. Shout out to Jackie Kinder, who is the absolute so Ted many Lasso. shout outs today. I love it. Ted Lasso of Australian community radio. <laughs> <laughs> She's <laughs> such an encourager. My goodness. Um, and uh, her thing was like, you know, if if a show doesn't go to air, nobody died. <laughs> if if you know a song, if a, a segment doesn't land perfectly, it's okay. Nobody died. It's just a segment. But did you die? But exactly, right? <laughs> if I if I, you know, don't stream this week, it's okay. I, I didn't die. It's just yeah. that I'm not streaming this week. It's totally, yeah. totally fine. Okay. Um and and so that's kind of the the opposite angle of that. And in terms of like, you know, if I were to stop streaming, okay, but I haven't died. And also I completely believe that there will also be other people who are on different journeys who will come up and share their experiences yeah. and do it through their angle and and do their own beautiful unique thing mm -hmm. and and that's great and that's going to feed into the diversity of the community even more um so that's that angle um the other part in i guess the core of the question was like was it like feeling alone or was it like the lacking the motivation? Uh, it was more about feeling like a smaller part of a whole. So understanding that you don't want to take away from the whole by not being present. That's, that's how I kind yeah. of see it. Yeah. I, I get that. Um, but that's but okay also... if it doesn't resonate with you. Part of it, yeah, no, and not everything has to resonate with everybody. Um, but but part of it is, I guess, part of it is protecting your energy and knowing that if I am not part of the whole, even for a little while, it will just become a different shape that I can then rejoin later, if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. Um, everything goes oh, yeah. on, as Porter Robinson taught us. Um, <laughs> everything goes sure. on when, even when we're gone. So, you know, there will be more sunrises and sunsets. Um, there'll be more creators come in to do their own cool, unique thing. Mm -hmm. um, and that's nothing you. to be – even without me. And, and mm -hmm. I then get to, you know, kind of sit on the sidelines and – be their cheerleader when that happens yeah. and and yeah, champion sure. them and what they do. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah. And it's, it's honestly, and it's a, it's just as valid. It's just as beautiful. And, you know, it can be done in such a, such a meaningful way for people who are putting themselves out there. And we both know it takes so much to, to show up every day and create. Mm. I saw a, I'm going to have to try and like scribble this. I don't know if this is going to appear on the screen well at all, but like <laughs> my apologies, right? I so, can read yep. your um, little lanyards there from all the events you've been to. Oh, these ones here? So we've got, yeah. we've got I VidCon can read full here. access. Yeah, that, that, that was VidCon 2019, RIP VidCon. Um, <laughs> dream hack. We've got yeah. hacks. We've got another yeah. dream hack one. We've got. Melbourne Esports Open, MEO, let's go. Okay, so so here's, it, it starts with a bunch of circles, right? And then okay. it says, like, um, this is what people think uh, consistency is. I'm just going to have to, like, scribble really quickly here. But then, like, okay. the top row is, like, every circle is full to the brim. It's like, this is what people think consistency is. See how they're all, okay. like, totally yep. full? When yeah. in actuality, consistency and giving your best every day is going to look like this. Bottom row, right? Some days okay. it's going to be full. Other days it might not be full, but that's still giving your best. And it's still, yeah. you know, that's the, <laughs> the mm -hmm. worst telestrator ever. Look at this. Um, but, but that's 
that's what giving your best is and that's what the consistency yeah. is and don't judge yourself on the days when you're not at 100 percent. for sure i i used to i used to feel that way like with because I, I do a little bit of um gaming news and some gaming reviews like written ones they take you know, the reviews take a lot of work you're talking about writing a small essay you know a couple of times a month like you know not many gamers do that if they're you know not being paid because it, it does take a lot and I I know that some days I'm going to do like the other day I did like three three news things but like yesterday I did none and that's okay I'm still part of the team like I still amped up other people's posts that they did and you know like uh, that's why you're in a team right so yeah some days I feel I can feel like I'm not contributing enough, but I know that when I'm on, I'm on for, for yeah. sure. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I get it. And like I said, it's honestly, <laughs> it takes time to reach this level of maturity. And I think that's not only why I brought you on, but the re the whole reason for this is because there's a lot of conversations about uwu girls and fuck that guy and all that kind of stuff. Right. But there's not enough model conversations about reasoning and emotional maturity in in this space and what it what it takes to be a healthy protected energy gamer girl you know like where's where where's that content so so yeah so, it's here yeah <laughs> it's here it's here if you want it it's here uh we, we're here every week um <laughs> <laughs> for sure um but yeah and I'm just I'm just so I'm so happy I'm so happy that you're here honestly it's just amazing um it's just my heart is full my heart is so full and thank the, you the, yeah thank you for having me on thank you for the energy and enthusiasm that you bring to this as well you know you wouldn't be able to create uh, a platform like this without that really deep passion and connection to the the content to the, the games but to the community as well it's really really special what you're creating here so you should be very thank proud you. thank you i I want, I want to make sure that was public and not in the green room okay <laughs> it doesn't get edited out <laughs> <laughs> all right as we as i feel like we're we're meeting a natural kind of close um i i will ask what have you been playing what will you be playing and what are you going to be streaming what's going on what, what can people look forward to okay you? so um i we talked about forza horizon earlier on um and i'm mm. moving have you away tried from well, I, I'm, I was going to say I'm, I'm moving away from Forza Horizon because I've been playing that every single week since it came out in 2018, Horizon 4, mm -hmm. I want to say, um, and then Horizon 5. And I love both of them, but I'm just so burnt out on them. Yeah. Um, and and I have been waiting for Forza Motorsport for, for so long, and it is out, and it is everything I had hoped for. I mean, there's, you mm -hmm. know, there's still some, some bugs to work out. There's still some kind of shifts that are being made in, their approach to it but basically it's it's everything i had hoped that it would be um at this early stage of its lifespan so yeah. i i've i've moved across i'm assuming per, not permanently i mean I'm, i might come back to forza horizon at some point but forza motorsport is where i'm kind of setting up my home now um and, mm -hmm. and trying to work my way through that um and i'm really enjoying that um i've also been playing uh fortnite og <laughs> <laughs> I have too. Big. Oh my god, it's so good. I can see why they had like their biggest ever day of numbers of people jumping back into Fortnite OG like, the day that launched. Like, it makes perfect yeah. sense. Uh, but I also <laughs> love the fact that it's it's like Fortnite, the original island, but also with like a, a 2023 graphics kind of overhaul. Yeah. So it's like the HDR <laughs> remake of, of the first season of Fortnite. Like, it's Remastered. Great. Yeah, <laughs> Fortnite remastered. They didn't talk in that voice. I don't know why I did that. Um, Love that. So I've been really enjoying that. I, in my idle time, I've been playing a game. This is so embarrassing. 
Um, it's a, it's a little like Android game. I think it might be on iOS called Zen Idol. <laughs> um, Zen Idol. Zen I D L E. Um, oh, okay. It's it's like an idol game, um, but it's got like a bunch of like. Oh, hang on, I'm gonna log into it and it's gonna tell me that I've got like daily freebies to claim or whatever. It's literally just like it it spawns. Ball- oh, hang on, let me zoom in so that it uh, you can actually see it. It like it spawns balls and then you have to like prestige them um, and buy. This is a terrible piece of. It's so difficult to show you why this is meant to be a good game. Like this is what the screen looks like. Yeah, it's like there's there's balls, balls falling, falling, but but you get points. You get points for them falling, and then you build up, and then you buy more, and then you you make the. So I I put far too much effort into this game to be <laughs> describing it so poorly. It is like a mobile where it's like it's it's not on any what is kind the aim? of level. Like what is the goal to to get lots of to get the balls? most monies, get them get the most monies. I guess, okay. um, but it's just an endless game. Like it's just an idle game. It's okay. like cookie clicker. It's just like see how yeah, far okay. you can go. Right, um, amazing, <laughs> disastrous, like- disastrous to my personal <laughs> life when I could be like you know, <laughs> send- sending someone a message telling them I love them, and instead I am sitting there, like <laughs> <laughs> prestiging the the red ball to go up to be worth like you know one septillion points. One sept- you know, like <laughs> you know, ridiculous. just. You can just gamify your life, right? So just say, mm. if I make five nice comments on Instagram to creators, I can play. You know what? I've literally done that. Yeah. Have I told you this? No. Okay. So let me um, let me slide across to my home screen on my phone. This is going to be a, a special one for the people watching. Okay. So um, this is my oh, – hang on. Let me just make sure there's – Okay, let me move that over to that screen. Let me move that over to that screen. Okay, we're going to be fine. So this is my um, this is one of my pages on my home phone, and each of these mm-hmm. are uh, on my home phone. What on my on my mobile? Um, and each of these are different, like daily to do lists. And when you've done something, like, let's say I feel brushed the my ring. teeth this morning, right? I've done this. Ready? Like, uh, let me turn blue. Yeah. And so when I do the things that I need to do each day, gamifying my life, I, I tick it. And then by the end of the day, hopefully I have a nice, colorful home screen full of things like oh. doing Duolingo awesome. or, or doing Pokemon Go. But also like, did I share some piece of content about music? Did I share some piece yeah. of music or my or, or content or my thoughts about games? Did I do some kind of physical activity today? Did I mm-hmm. spend at least 15 minutes outside? Did I meditate today? Did I update Instagram? Did I have a healthy lunch? Did I avoid impulse buys? Hey. Did, did I, like, in my head, come up with three things that I am grateful for? And when mm. I've done those, I, like, tick them off on the screen so I can see them. That's, nice. well, that's me, like, gamifying my life. <laughs> um, it's not necessarily to your point. It's it's not necessarily you know write five comments on people's Instagram. Yeah. Um. But there is one on there. Where is it? Holy crap! Where's it gone? Um. There is one that's on there that was called like cheerleader and oh no yeah. hype gal. Sorry, it's called hype, hype gal. gal. It's this one here. And because I have um said nice things about you i'm gonna tick it perfectly there we go, right? definitely you and definitely so it's like today. the the key of of hype gal is have you just said something encouraging to someone else in the last 24 hours whether yeah. it's on social media whether it's in real life whether it's something like that um and most days i get to tick that so that's gamifying your life <laughs> <laughs> it's done For sure well, that's awesome that you have a system like that. That's thank you so much for sharing that because, no, you know, it can be people might think, oh, it's a bit like embarrassing, but you know, have you seen have you seen how people like mindful journal or people who do mm. that knitting like their mental health for the day like or I saw I saw someone actually do they're making like a blanket of how in love they feel. Oh wow! Yeah. So oh, that's deep. Yeah, they're like um. Well, th- this particular person is, you know, openly dating, like not committed to any one person, mm-hmm. but 
but yeah, just like how, how in love they feel, or, you know, how in, intense those feelings are. So, wow. so it's very, yeah, it's right. very, That's cool. it's very similar to that. I like those, um, I like those journals where it's like the little squares and it's yeah. like, you know, how much, or, and it's like in graphs almost like how much sleep do they get and they color in like how many or like what the weather was like or I, yeah, I find those really aesthetically pleasing, but I'm. But I, I can't maintain one because they involve I like maintain one. <laughs> sitting down and like finding a pen and like coloring it in <laughs> and this sort of thing. This is why I use this app. It's a free app, by the way. Uh, it's called Habits. It's open source Habits. Uh, or Loop Loop Habit Tracker or something. It's that effect. It's on Android. It may not be on iOS. Others probably exist. I think that are paid for. Um, but I can then go and look at like. <laughs> Uh, let me just check and make sure that I, for example, did have breakfast yesterday and today, tick. Um, it, it then tells you, like, here are the days that you've done this thing. Mm. So I can, like, go into the nerdy data and say, like, look at the days that I didn't yeah, have there breakfast. Yeah, there you go. Wasn't I naughty? Yeah. Wasn't oh, I naughty that, on yeah, days? okay. So that looks very <laughs> aesthetically pleasing to me. <laughs> you know, I, I think it could be done better. So um, watch this space, Doom Kid and Triana creating. Whoa, we're going to do our own app. And then you may, I think it would be way better if you could share, you could share and like track points and like get rewards and like any, yeah, I think that'd be awesome. Harvest like users dings. data and then exploit it. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I don't want to sell it to anyone. I just, I think it would be like, I think it'd be cool. Like, I don't know cool. how, and I don't know if you could like hook it up to your vacuum and be like, how, or set a timer for vacuuming. Like how, how much time did you vacuum? And then there's like a score and like, who's, who's the number one vacuumer, you know? In oh, the youth. wow. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, I, I love the idea of like doing the vacuuming and then you get like a little Xbox achievement pop. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> did the vacuuming for six weeks in a row. Yeah. <laughs> all, all time world, world champion uh, vacuumer. Mm. Um, anyway, <laughs> there's I'm, leaderboards. There's like a global yeah, leaderboard of yeah. documents. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! And, um, but you know that it would be like with, with Mixer when they had Forza Horizon Four, and you got points for streaming. There would be people who just like leave their vacuum on and just be racking up points twenty four hours a day, and you wouldn't be able to catch them. <laughs> That's that would be like really expensive though. Like you just have your vacuum on. And I think Maybe. I don't know who. I have a stick vacuum. You can't just, you have to press the button. You have to oh. like MacGyver it, like put some, wrap some sticky tape around the handle or something. <laughs> Remember when people on the, sorry, I'm just going to grab a, a prop here. Remember when people had the, um, uh, what's it called? The, the Forza Horizon 4 and they, they brought in a rule. that's no, no, you can't just like leave your car sitting there. You have to keep moving. So they would yeah. get like a hair tie and, and put the hair tie like around the thumbstick like this yeah. and and so like the 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 gope or on the the accelerator and so they'll yeah. just constantly be sitting there doing donuts they just like <laughs> <laughs> keep the control like that <laughs> set it on the desk and it would be 24 hours a day of just this car doing donuts and streaming on mixer what a time to be alive you could just find a hair tie and and wrap it stick it to the the vacuum stick <laughs> so that it was constantly on racking up points for yourself have we gone off topic <laughs> we, we we may have, but you know what? That's okay. Uh, <laughs> I've I've let it because <laughs> why not? I, I was in control, and then uh, I just decided to encourage the, the the craziness. But you know what? That's it's so real because it's literally like I, I remember explaining it to someone as um, you know when you know when you're leaving at a party or like leaving a friend's house or whatever. Mm -hmm. Not that I not that I do this often, but. You know, it's that situation where you're leaving, you've got you've got your car keys in your hand and you're just saying, oh, yeah, goodbye. And it's like, oh, one more thing. And then, you know, you start talking again and then like you sort of like you sort of like moving towards the car and you're kind of getting to the destination. But and you know that it's going to end soon, but you just you just enjoy the time that you have. And yeah, but I think I think probably there's probably something un unconsciously like in my mind where I'm like, this is great. It's good vibes. It's great content. I love capturing it. Why wouldn't I want to capitalize on that and continue to film? Um, because, you know, hashtag women in gaming, you know? Um, 
hundred percent, hundred percent. Um, I, I'm just, I was desperately looking around for a car key prop, and I don't have one. What a shame. <laughs> I don't. I don't keep my car keys on my desk. No. I mean, I, you might. I. I. I do not. Because uh, that would be crazy. If I don't put my car keys in the bowl next to the door, I lose them. They hang on the back of the door for me. Oh, okay. Like that. Like that. But I know my, my door's open. You can see my, hold on, this way? Yeah, front door. You can see my front door there. Um, oh, so right. It's open. Okay. I know. Anyway, on that note, um, thank you so much to our uh, watchers on YouTube and our listeners on Spotify. Uh, it's been a fantastic time. Thank you again to Triana for gracing us with their presence. Uh, fantastic time. We love to see it. All of the details for Triana will be in the description. Uh, she she posts quite often, so I'm sure you can keep up to date with all of her all of her socials. I don't know what your scheduling time is on your mul- multiple accounts, so I'm just going to say that. And um, yeah. Thank you. Uh, at the end of the day, gamers, touch grass, and take breaks, and protect your energy. Beautiful. What a way to end. <laughs> what a way <laughs> to end. Thank you so much for being here. And see you next time for our next episode of Coag Conversations. Mm-hmm.